197 pounds. The opportunity to watch a number one ranked wrestler in the country, Eric Schultz, the senior from Tinley Park, Illinois, for Nebraska in the red against Matt Robolewski, who comes in at five and two. A challenge on his hands for the Illini wrestler. Woo. I'll tell you what, uh, Schultz is uh, on fire and he's a worthy number one. Robluski has had a good year. He's uh, turned things around from a losing record last year, and he's got good position, and he's going to, he's done a nice job for the Illini, but uh, Schultz is at another level. What makes Schultz the number one wrestler in the country? Well, because he's beating the best wrestlers around him is what he's doing. He's had another win over Warner from uh, uh, Iowa, and um, he's just uh, taking care of business. And, and so uh, I'm sure, you know, Miles Amin up at 197 is going to have a lot to say about that. Thought he was going to be at 184, but uh, Eric Schultz, uh, an Illini. I mean, I don't mean for the university, but an Illinois uh, wrestler. It's funny how many Illinois high school wrestlers are uh, at this uh, weight, 197. Schultz, Warner, Norfleet, uh, Caffey. Uh, you know, four of the top five came from Illinois high school prep careers. And uh, Schultz has uh, uh, stepped up, and uh, he has uh, just been an incredible. He's pushed himself, and, um, you know, uh, in this um, COVID season, you either come out better or you come out worse when they got on the mat late in the fall. Well, because of the work ethic and what uh, Schultz did uh, on the offseason in his basement, in his backyard, etc., he came out better. Well, Tim, I've heard mixed reviews from coaching staffs of, you know, get, not getting your dual season started until January, and that's when the, the action picked up, not having the pre-conference tournaments where you're going around the country, whether it's wrestling in open tournaments or the Midlands or in Las Vegas. Some coaches have liked it, others have not. What's been your impression of the way that's affected the wrestlers? Well, first of all, I, I like the idea of a second semester sport um, and um, and getting the start and going and, and uh, uh, maybe having the start uh, down at the Southern Scuffle and, and, and moving out from there um, in January. But um, uh, I think that it's an individual thing. Some wrestlers, uh, um, it's just best that they don't get, have the body wear on them because I hate to see uh, wrestlers have uh, season-ending injuries at the Cliff Keen or the Midlands, etc., and then not be ready. And so I think that uh, uh, the compact season, um, if we found the right place for the NCAAs at the end of the year, maybe in April or so, would be great. But uh, it has a lot to do with individual and how um, your body reacts to a, uh, the season. And for some, a shorter season is um, positive. And, and the bottom line is, whatever it is, it is, you know? <laughs> and, and so, and so uh, I like the coaches, the programs, and the wrestlers that deal with what's ever in front of them and go after the prize that is always the same prize. And that's to be your best version of yourself when it comes to the conference and the, the national title. I mean, is it about the national title? Well, you ask the best coaches, and they're going to say, no, it's about being the best you can be. The rest will take care of itself. And Schultz has continued to build on a very good self from a year ago before the season was cut short. Goes low with under 10 seconds left in the period. Schultz last year, 21-3, first-team All-American, finished second in the Big Ten behind Colin Moore. And what Mark Manning said about him is that he's just relaxed this year, and it's paid dividends for him. You go back to last year, he's won 11 straight dual matchups in the regular season, and some close ones this year. You mentioned against Jacob Warner of Iowa, 3-2 against Cameron Caffey, Michigan State, 6-5. So he's been cool under pressure. Well, I think this is a good example so far, and Nebraska's shown it today even. I mean, cool under pressure, um, winning in close matches. And so right now, uh, that's important because Robluski has an opportunity today, big opportunity. What a, a signature win this would be for him, and he's put himself in a position. He's wrestling the match that needs to be wrestled because uh, usually the, uh, uh, the, the, the lesser opponent, the one with the less credentials and the less success, needs to slow the match down, needs to go ear to ear, and... Um, Needs to not give uh, uh, Schultz the opportunity. So far, so good, but I don't think Schultz is worried. I think he's understanding and trusting his uh, his training. And, uh, you know, you talked about uh, 
you know, just the uh, the whole COVID season here. The extra matches this year, um, you know, having extra matches around the dual meets, it's uh, given all the guys more of a team type atmosphere. So there's been some positives where the extra matches that count that have been wrestled at the same time, the, the varsity's out there. And um, I think that's been good because uh, the team atmosphere, uh, the camaraderie, the feeling like we're all on the same team, just something to think about. It was kind of cool. It wouldn't have happened except for the situation this year. So the uh, extra matches are great for the sport as well. Those have been beneficial, coaches have told us, just from a mental health standpoint of guys that might not necessarily see action on the day of the meet still get to go out there and know that their training is paying off towards something. Bluska doing a great job of fighting here. He fought off a takedown at the end of the last period. Can he do it here? I mean, this is huge. Schultz working pressure on and the edge. He gets the two in. No, no count there, but nice job by Schultz. Where no one where he's at. Uh, I think that was that was two there called by Jamie George for a takedown. They're throwing the brick because it's 197 maybe. But uh, right here he drives through and got the body lock and. I'm wondering if they haven't stepped out of bounds yet. Do you think that the, the issue would be a potential cylinder call here? I no, because there isn't a potential cylinder call. I don't know what I don't know what the uh, throw is except that you might as well throw it. And gets the two. Schultz comes through in a big way there. I mean that's that's he just he just stayed on it. Schultz just stayed on it. That's really says a lot about where he's at. And while they take they take the break here, you know, uh, before we're done, I just I, I've been thinking a lot about what the athletic trainers have done, and I just think of Jeff Johnnell for Illinois and Tyler Weir uh, for uh, uh, Nebraska, and we give a lot of credit to the coaches, but you got to give a lot of credit to the athletic trainers for keeping it all together. And they have daily testing, and they're up early in the morning, and they're late at night, and so the team physicians and the administration and uh, uh, the uh, but the athletic trainers, and these are two of the best, longtime Big Ten trainers. After further review, we call the bad stands. No locked hands. <laughs> Maybe locked hands, maybe they wanted to call, uh, but I mean, there's not a takedown here. And, um, they, and if that's what they were saying, uh, there was no, no, nothing controlled and he gets two takedown. Good call by Jamie George. And uh, there's a guy that looks confident in it. I mean, look at, look at Schultz there coming on. He says, all right, this is my match right here. And, and uh, I don't care if it's close. Rabluski wrestling very well, but now, uh, He's got the opportunity to go down and get out and get back in the match, but uh, Schultz right to where he wants to be. I don't know exactly why they threw uh, that, uh, that the challenge block there, except that if you think you have something close and you only have one match left and you have one left, you might as well throw it. They were adamant about it right at the point of attack but didn't get it well if you're gonna throw it you got to give it up you got you got to give you know you got to do your best acting job and everything else you got it you got to be adamant that's for sure you don't say whatever that's where you don't say it is what it is right <laughs> can't take it with you yeah, schultz does a nice job he did a nice job in that takedown and keeping his hips heavy now he's got wet it there that's a great mat return right there taking the starch out of uh Rubluski and getting him flat for a few seconds anywhere and then out out on his see he's not on his knees he's driving forward he's got the half nelson and uh anticipating a little roll through there one minute remaining Number one wrestler in the country at 197 pounds, Nebraska's Eric Schultz, looking to finish off a perfect dual regular season. Yeah, he's on fire, but this weight class is wide open nationally, I'll tell you that. There, there's a lot of guys at the top that are capable of winning, it, and so if you're Schultz, you have to feel good about the way you're wrestling, because whoever is hot, whoever is wrestling their best, uh, it'll have to take that, because there's a lot of quality guys at this weight class. 
Four Big Ten wrestlers in the top 10 at 197 pounds, including the top three. And that's every weight class. All 10 of them, there's either a Big Ten wrestler ranked number one or number two. Short time for Robolewski, 3-1, effectively 4-1 with a riding time point for Schultz. And so Schultz, with a late flurry of action, has the clock expire on his series of moves, a 4-1 winner. Oh, <laughs>